<clears throat> so, your Royal Highness, the Crown Prince of Norway, President of the Norwegian <clears throat> Academy of Science and Letters, Professor Niels Stenses, Minister of <clears throat> Uh, research and education, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> I am <clears throat> very much grateful to the Abelian Committee and the Norwegian Academy of Science and Letters, <clears throat> which awarded me the Abel Prize. So uh, the name of Abel is known to all mathematicians in the world through the century. But if we just start to think how many mathematicians, how many names of mathematicians from that time still <coughs> can be seen in mathematics, then we shall come only to something like four names, Euler, Abel, Lagrange, and Gauss. And <coughs> it shows that actually 200 years is not so much if these people are just very close to us in various uh, sense of this word. So <clears throat> I received many congratulations in connection with the award, in particular from my colleagues in the mathematics department of Princeton University, from Landau Institute of Theoretical Physics, members from the Institute of Information Transition, and also from many friends, colleagues, co-authors, and students. And this is the kind of support which <clears throat> gave me very high inspiration and impetus for the future work. But uh, something <clears throat> is more than <clears throat> only this. I think that uh, many years ago, just <clears throat> something happened in at least in Moscow, when a group of mathematicians working on very abstract pro problems of mathematics decided that uh, now it is time to change the field and study thoroughly <clears throat> the theoretical physics and present it as a part of mathematics, or better to say, to find in <clears throat> in theoretical physics, the problems for mathematical research. The previous generation gave striking examples of mathematicians who made this cont fundamental contribution to physics. Let me mention the name of my advisor, great mathematician of the 20th century, Kolmogorov, also, Gelfand, who influenced many mathematicians in Russia, <laughs> Bogolyubov, and John von Neumann <clears throat> in the US. Maybe I just did not mention someone, but people can help me with this list. <clears throat> so, but these were only just, as you can see, few people who just were mathematicians, but worked as physicists. In the mathematics department of Landau Institute of Theoretical Physics, which was headed by the great mathematical physics of Novikov, just created a new style. In this style, just mathematicians could listen and what is more important, could understand physicists in spite of the fact that physicists use their own terminology, their language, <coughs> um, and their style. Uh, so just, it was time when, uh, if mathematicians did not understand something from physical work, they uh, could take them and ask them to explain everything in complete detail. And there was even a style according to which <coughs> good physicists are physicists who can explain their results to mathematicians. It was really something very new and <clears throat> very inspiring. Later, this style of doing mathematics and mathematical physics be became somehow standard in the world. <clears throat> Such mathematicians as Gromov, Kansevich, Ruel, and others became just frequent participants of physics seminar, while Witten, Fadeev, Zakharov, 
who is here, Zyberg and other, just became participants of mathematics seminar. So it, it was really something very strange and very new. And this was extremely important in scientific life of many people, in particular in my life. And I must say at this moment that um, many people played an important role um, in my rise as a mathematician. It is my great pleasure to mention that my grandfather from my mother's side was a very famous mathematician whose name was Kagan. Uh, he, uh, he has spent most of his time in Odessa, just a small town in the southern part of Ukraine. But later he became the chair of differential geometry in Moscow State University. He worked on foundations of geometry and even had some contacts of Hilbert of his time. And he also was the chief editor of some journal which published papers which were oriented to young people um, who want to, be, to, to study more deeply mathematics. What is interesting there was that the journal published the names of all just uh, young students who solved the problem which were published in this journal. And it was very inspiring because sometimes people can be asked how many problems from this journal did you solve? And, and just it, was, it could be a reason for just offers for new people. I would like to mention also my half-brother, Baron Blatt, who is well known for, because of his work in classical mechanics. And he was always insisting that my future is in mathematics. As it was already mentioned that my Thesis advisor was Kolmogorov, and his role in the development of mathematics developed of, <clears throat> and it deserves a very special lecture, and it can be very long. <clears throat> the famous Russian mathematician Gelfand organized a remarkable seminar, which was attended by many people of my generation, previous generation and young generation. It, Gilfand had a remarkable just um, quality. He could explain in a very clear and simple way, um, way just difficult mathematical theory or theorems, which sometimes require a lot of work. But he could do it just very quickly in, in, in a very useful way. This was the reason by, uh, by which his seminar was attended by maybe 100 people or even more just during the many years. My first advisor was Dinkin, who is now Professor Emeritus at the Cornell University. In conclusion, let me say that this day is unforgettable for my wife and myself. Dette er an unforts glemingleg dag minkone, minkone means for my wife, minkone hoc for my myself. Thank you very much.